Hello. This is pretty cozy. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome for a conversation in the State of University uh, with President Cage. My name is Ian Flores. I am the Vice Chair of the West Virginia Univers State University Board of Governors. Um, I, too, am an alum here at West Virginia State. As um, President Cage mentioned earlier about Kathy, I was a non-traditional student, so you know, it took me a little longer than most people to get my undergrad, but I'm here, and I'm so grateful for the um, journey that I had with uh, West Virginia State University. Um, you know, in the time I've been here, quite honestly, I was not really connected. Um, life gets in the way. Six children get in the way. Um, <laughs> but um, back in 21, a very good friend of mine, and most people that have been at this university for a while know him, Joey Oden, encouraged me. Yeah. So he encouraged me to kind of get involved. And ever since then, um, I'm very grateful to be involved at West Virginia State University. You've seen the changes here, the uh, WVSU Center, cybersecurity, the nursing program, and really all these, um, you know, the, the the momentum we're having, that Chuck presentation was tremendous. And companies do not give money to universities unless they see some potential for it. So just having said that, I think that, you know, West Virginia State University has momentum behind it. And I think that the best days are ahead for, um, for this university. So with all that, um, we wanted to do a different format for this. Mm -hmm. As President Cage shared with me earlier, he goes, last year, he goes, 100 some slides. He goes, that's not going to happen this year. <laughs> so we wanted to do just a little conversation. Uh, and then I'll just, you know, just a little um, ask some questions with President Cage. And just, you are, you're welcome here in this little fireside chat we're having today. So with that, um, so we are here today to have a conversation on the state of university. Uh, President Cage, how would you? describe the state of West Virginia State University today. Yes. Well, thank you, Governor Flores, uh, for being here, uh, for your leadership, and for all the leadership of our members of our Board of Governors. Uh, we know that uh, the work that you do is on a volunteer basis, but it is work that is critically important uh, to the uh, success of our university. So I appreciate you being here. I also uh, want to start my conversation um, with uh, a sentiment that I always share anytime I speak uh, to an audience, and that is by saying thank you. Thank you to all of the members of the West Virginia State University community for what you do each and every day to help propel our institution forward. Um, you know, no leader, no leader uh, can be successful without the support of a strong team. So I do want to take a moment to acknowledge the members of the university's uh, executive cabinet. If you are here with us, which I see you are, please stand and let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you for what you do to help us to move our university forward. And also want to acknowledge uh, uh, members of our academic enterprise, our leaders, uh, members of the provost office, our deans, uh, and chairs, would you please stand and, and be recognized? And certainly, I know that we have other board members of the Board of Governors. I know I saw Governor Petrozinski and Governor McClung. Uh, if there are any other board members, would you all please stand and be recognized? So thank you all for what you do for our institution. So let me um, jump right into your first question, um, Governor Flores, and that is, you know, what do I believe to be the state of our university? And I'll answer that question by saying this. I believe that West Virginia State University is in the midst of an incredible period of renaissance, of idealism, of innovation, and of impact. We are doing some very incredible things, ladies and gentlemen. We've added new programs like cybersecurity. We're investing in programs like 
nursing. We just saw an incredible um, check presentation this morning from Highmark Health. And I agree with Governor Flores. Companies like Highmark don't write $300,000 plus checks to institutions, really to any organization, if they don't believe in what we're doing. So from creating new programs, new high-demand academic programs, from expanding our presence by opening up the West Virginia State University Center downtown to leaning into our land-grant mission to bring a new school of agriculture, food, and natural resources to our institution, uh, to being involved with the community uh, through athletics, through opening our facilities up to allow the community to come in and to experience our university, you name it, we are doing it uh, to help ensure that our university continues to rise, continues to soar. So the state of the university is strong. That said, there are challenges. All of us in higher education are facing challenges with respect to how we reimagine higher education. We know that COVID only served to help exacerbate those challenges. We're seeing enrollment declines across the country. We're seeing some institutions actually shuttering their doors. We're seeing members of our community, our parents, our students, our lawmakers, asking questions about the value of a higher education. Through it all, we must take a step back and ask ourselves tough questions and reimagine what our institution will look like for the future. So I believe that we are on the right path. I believe that we have a plan for our future, but I believe in order for us to get there, we're all going to have to continue to work together. So again, the state of the university is strong and working together, we will see success. Thank you. So the recent annual session of the West Virginia legislature just recently ended. Yes. And in case you didn't know this, President Gaines' background uh, <laughs> was in legislative liaison. Um, so having said that, what were your takeaways from the most recent session, and what did the session mean for the for West Virginia State University? Yeah. Well, thank you for the question. I mean, uh, and, and Governor Flores is right. I mean, I um, before I got into higher education, I actually spent uh, time um, in Washington D.C. working on the Hill, where I was a, a policy uh, policy wonk, so to speak. Uh, <laughs> but I also lobbied. I was a registered federal lobbyist uh, in, in D.C. Um, lobbying for education issues. So I really do enjoy the legislative session. It's one of my, my favorite times of the year because I, I do revel in the business of developing relationships and advancing policy positions, especially when those policy, policy positions are so meaningful. And the work that we do at West Virginia State University makes my job easy when I go to the legislature because it is a just cause that we are all advocating for. Um, the legislative session ended um, with some wins and, and some question marks. And I think when we talk about wins, look at the fact that we received $5 million uh, to support our land grant program. So $5 million state match of our federal land grant funds, uh, we anticipate being able to turn that $5 million into $10 million because it is a one-to-one -one match. And that is something that we haven't been able to do uh, in the past. So I think what that shows is that the work that we are doing to develop relationships uh, with our partners in the legislature are paying off. Uh, folks are understanding and acknowledging the significant impact that this university has across the state of West Virginia. Uh, so that was a huge, uh, huge win for us. Um, we uh, do have more work to do when it comes to the $50 million proposal that was presented by Governor Justice at the beginning of the state of his state of, state of the state address. If you recall, the governor uh, proposed uh, making a $50 million investment in West Virginia State University to build a state-of-the-art agricultural laboratory on our campus. And what I can say to you, as we were up at the legislature throughout the session, almost every week, 
um, walking the halls, meeting with members. I can tell you that the support is there. Uh, however, as we got to the last, literally the last two weeks of the regular session of the, legis of the legislature, um, there was an uh, unexpected surprise, which really disrupted the budget negotiations. Um, there was a $462 million um, question mark relative to monies that the U.S. Department of Education um, uh, are arguing that the state of West Virginia may owe them. So $462 million in COVID money uh, for, for K-12 education. Uh, now, you know, what I know is what I've read in the media reports, and it seems like um, those negotiations are going well between the state of West Virginia and the Department of Education, and that the West Virginia may not have to pay that money back. Uh, that's good news for us, because if that is the case, it makes it more likely that we will be able to get the $50 million lab funded by the legislature. So what we know is that the governor is considering calling a special session either in April or in May. And what we will be doing in between that time is what we have been doing since January, and that is we will be engaging with our elected officials in the state legislature, uh, reminding them about the importance of this project. I am cautiously optimistic uh, that we will be able to get the project across the finish line during um, the special sessions that will be coming up for the legislature. As I've said, I believe that this new facility will be a game changer for West Virginia State University. It will be a joint facility. It will house uh, the West Virginia Department of Agriculture's uh, laboratories, but it will also house um, our forthcoming School of Agriculture, Food, and Natural Resources. It will provide space for, for faculty offices, laboratory, uh, and classrooms. And it will really, again, help to accelerate the work that we're trying to do uh, to elevate WVSU's profile uh, in the agricultural space. So again, legislative session had some wins uh, and again, some to be uh, continued. To be, to yes. be determined, great. Yes. I can't believe it's almost, almost a year ago since you were inaugurated as West Virginia State University's 13th president. So you're out of um, warranty now. <laughs> <laughs> so why do you consider the biggest achievements during the past year? Wow. You know, I, uh, that's a hard question to answer because we, we've had so many. You know, we have had so many. <laughs> that was a good answer, wasn't it? <laughs> we, we literally have had so many wins that we've put on the board. So I don't know if I can, can really narrow it down to one thing in particular. Again, I do point to the work that we did uh, very, very efficiently in bringing cybersecurity to West Virginia State University. And, you know, when I arrived at the university, I wasn't president at the time, I was uh, interim president. And I said uh, to the team, we absolutely have to bring cybersecurity education to West Virginia State because it is a incredibly hot field, it's in demand, and we need to make sure that our students have access to that uh, because that is, cybersecurity certainly is a job of the new economy. And uh, we quickly pulled together a team of, of faculty members uh, and staff and put together a proposal, uh, which we submitted to the Kanawha County Commission. And the Kanawha County Commission funded that proposal, which really provided the seed, seed money uh, for us to stand up the cybersecurity um, a program. Um, we also received grant funding. Uh, through a joint grant through the Department of Education that we have with Marshall University to do cybersecurity uh, research in the area of critical infrastructure. So uh, right now where we are is we have a uh, cybersecurity minor. Uh, my goal and the goal of uh, the leadership of the cybersecurity program is to rapidly scale that up to a Bachelor's of Science in cybersecurity. Again, because we want to make sure that our students uh, have access to that incredibly uh, emerging uh, field. So cybersecurity is, is high at the top of the list when it comes to the things that we've achieved. Second, I'd point to uh, our doctorate in education and uh, leadership studies. Again, one of the things that I said when, we, when I arrived at the institution, I looked around and I said, this institution, and 
as you know, Sunday, this past Sunday was our Founders Day. Yep. But this institution has been uh, in existence for 130 plus years. We're engaged in excellence in teaching. We're engaged in excellence in research. And we're also engaged in excellence in extension or outreach across all of the 55 counties in the state of West Virginia. So what I said is no reason that we should not be a doctoral granting right. institution, period, full stop. So what I did was we pulled the team together. And as it turns out, uh, the incredible faculty in our education department have been working on this for some time. They've been working on the, the doctorate in education uh, program for some time. So what we really did was we cleared the way and gave them the green light to begin working on that, to complete the work on that program, to bring it forward so they could be approved. And now, Governor Flores and ladies and gentlemen, we can proudly say that after 130 plus years, West Virginia State is a doctoral granting institution. And that is huge. It's huge because it elevates the institution. It changes our profile. And that program has been wildly successful in terms of the number of applications that they've received. And I believe that that program will help uh, to expand West Virginia State's impact across the nation. So cybersecurity, doctoral ed level education are things that I'm proud of. But you know, the thing that I'm most proud of, the thing that I'm most proud of, and this, is, and this still continues to be a work in progress, is that I do deeply believe that we have done an excellent job, a noteworthy job, in helping to rekindle the state spirit. You know, I say every day that the power of this university rests in its people, yeah. in its people. And when I arrived here at the institution, it was rough times. It was rough times. Morale was low. Uh, confidence was in doubt. Frankly, the future of the university was in doubt. But what we were able to do uh, from the time that I arrived until present is to reinstill a sense of hope a sense of possibility. Is everything perfect? No. In an organization where you're dealing with hundreds of people, everything will never be perfect because people bring a lot of different personalities into any organization. And the trick is to try to navigate those personalities, to try to leverage those personalities, to try to bring people together in a way that will help us to drive the institution forward. So the thing that I am most proud of is the fact that we brought the university back from the brink and that we have begun to really rekindle the state spirit and to reinstill that hope about what is possible at this institution. And I agree, and um, I appreciate you. Uh, I stepped in into the Board of Governors in 21 when yeah you and I started in all this. So there's been a lot of challenges. So you mentioned earlier some of the challenges in higher education. Yeah. Um, so how is, what, what are the challenges and how is West Virginia State University doing to address those challenges? So let me start by saying that West Virginia State University is not alone. Um, every institution and I do mean every institution of higher education uh, in this country uh, is having a period of reckoning. Uh, we are faced with an incredibly volatile landscape. We know that the enrollment cliff is here and that the number of high school students graduating across this country uh, is going to continue to shrink year after year after year. So that means that the pool of students from which we, as an institution of higher education, can recruit from is going to be much smaller. It means that competition is going to be much more stiff as our peer institutions uh, continue to, uh, to try to maintain their competitive advantages as we will be doing the same thing. So we know that enrollment is going to be a challenge for us. Uh, we know that, as I said earlier, there have been some really serious conversations, policy conversations about 
what the value of higher education. Uh, policymakers and parents and students have begun to question whether or not a higher education still matters. Uh, in addition to that, we know that COVID has really put pressure on um, workforces across the country. Uh, folks are asking for more flexibility uh, in how they work. Folks are asking us to think about redesigning how we deliver a higher education. So all these things um, have created what I call the perfect storm. Our task is to try to figure out how to reimagine the university, how to realign the university in a way that allows us to continue to be viable uh, in the face of all of this volatility. What I can say is this, um, our number one priority, not just my number one priority, but our number one priority at West Virginia State University at the moment is enrollment yeah. and increasing enrollment through all categories. Uh, and, you know, we are really leaning into that. We have, we're glad to welcome Dr. Lee Young. Dr. Young, where, would you stand up? Dr. Lee, where's he at? Is he here? I don't know if he's here or not, but we're proud to welcome Dr. Lee Young here um, as our Vice President for Enrollment Management and Student Affairs. Uh, he is here to help us to reimagine our enrollment strategy, uh, and I am very pleased with what I've seen to date. So I believe that under his leadership and with the help of all of us, uh, we will see uh, an increase in our enrollment. Uh, with, respect, with respect to the question of the value of higher education, uh, what we are doing is we are working hand in hand uh, with industry, uh, asking them, what do you need to help support, to help to grow your workforce? We're working with companies like Nucor. We're working with companies like Toyota, with Unicare. You just heard the announcement today by Highmark. We're out there asking business what we can do, again, to help them support their workforces. Because if we do that, if we listen to them, and we bring that information back, and we incorporate it into what we're doing uh, in our curriculum, uh, we can ensure that our students are going to be able to come here, get a high-class education, and then go out and get a good job. And if we do that, that's going to answer the question, be responsive to the question that folks are asking about the value of a higher education. So these are the things that uh, keep me up at night, uh, making sure that our university is going to continue to be viable, uh, whether it be with respect to enrollment, with respect to um, uh, showing that we are, in fact, making a difference in the line with what the workforce needs. Uh, we're also looking at ways to grow the university's uh, revenues. And one of the things that we are in the midst of now is a capital campaign. We're in a quiet phase, so Pat Schumann won't let me talk about it um, publicly. But we are in the quiet phase of a capital campaign, a capital campaign in which we are working to raise a significant amount of resources for the university, again, all geared toward looking at uh, ways that we can shore, shore up our bottom line to ensure uh, the long-term uh, financial or fiscal sustainability of the institution. So you mentioned earlier one of the biggest achievements in the past year was becoming a um, doctorate degree granting institution and how important that is. Um, what are the areas of academic growth do you foresee? Yeah. Um, so I, I want to just I want to just take a moment to drill down on the EDD because it's not it's not just about creating or transitioning a university into a doctoral granting institution. I mean, while that's important, that is that's not why I really was wanted to to lean into that. It's creating doctoral programs that are responsive to the market and creating doctoral programs that are highly accessible. So if you if you you take a look at our EDD program, you'll notice that it's unique. It's unique in that it's completely online and that it's a two-year program. So an online, a program that's completely online that can be completed in two years using a cohort model is very attractive to working professionals. And that's really who we are targeting. We're targeting working professionals across this country 
who are interested in advancing their, their careers through getting doctoral level studies and leadership studies. So it's about finding those growth areas uh, where we can become leaders in what they call executive education. And that is really how I would describe our doctorate degree as an executive degree, because it is very much tailored to working adults. So what's next? I mean, I have, um, and I don't think this is any secret, uh, Dr. Carney, but uh, you know, I have challenged um, our leadership uh, in our Masters of Public Administration program. Uh, a program, the MPA program, is highly respected across the state. I've asked the question, what can we do to, to bring doctoral education to our MPA program? Uh, because I believe the time is right and we have, had, we have the expertise and the history in that area. I've also talked with uh, Dr. Davidson in criminal justice, another program where we have incredible expertise. Uh, is now the time, is the time right now to talk about um, bringing a doctoral level study to, to criminal justice? Again, another high demand field in which we're helping to train the next generation of leaders in, in law enforcement uh, and uh, beyond. So, I, you know, I see those as being areas of growth. I mentioned already cybersecurity. We're going to lean into that. Um, my goal is uh, by 2025, we'd like to have that Bachelor's of Science degree in computer science up, approved and up and running, accepting students and getting them prepared uh, to go out and get those good paying jobs. Nursing is something we'll continue to lean into, which is obvious from today's uh, Highmark Health announcement. We'll continue to do that. And um, last but not least, agriculture. I'm looking at Dr. Amy Smith uh, because she's leading our work uh, to help, again, grow to start. Really, I say grow because we've already laid some of the groundwork for the School of Agriculture. But Dr. Smith and her team will be leading our efforts along with um, the members of the, uh, our dean's council will be leading the work to bring, uh, again, that School of Agriculture, Food, and Natural Resources online here at West Virginia State. Okay, so regarding the School of Agriculture, um, where do those plans stand yeah. today, and how important is it to the future of the university? Well, um, Governor, it's incredibly important uh, to our future. As we all know here, West Virginia State University is a proud uh, 1890 land-grant institution. And as a land-grant institution, we were founded with the mission of providing agricultural and mechanical education uh, to uh, initially students of African-American students. And of course, over the years, we've expanded to, to include all students. But that was our mission, to provide that education in agriculture and mechanical sciences, to provide that uh, outreach to the community. That was, that's who we are at our core. Uh, and we carried out that tradition until the, 19, the late 1950s. Uh, when we lost our land grant status, the only, uh, only 189, really the only land grant institution to lose our, our land grant status uh, in, in the country. And today, uh, West Virginia State stands as the only land grant institution that doesn't have a school of agriculture. That doesn't sit right with me because without a school of agriculture, I don't believe that we are fully fulfilling our mandate as a land-grant institution. So uh, we're on a journey, and I do say a journey. We're on a journey to reverse that trend by creating a school of agriculture. Um, I say a journey because keep in mind that when uh, President Hazel Carter uh, worked to bring, to restore our land-grant status, that was a 10-year journey. Uh, so make no mistake, the School of Agriculture, Food, and Natural Resources is not going to happen overnight, but we are going to continue to make incremental steps to bring it online. And again, as I said, we've already, we already have programs in place. Mm -hmm. um, we have degrees in, in soil sciences and, and, uh, and agribusiness and other areas. So it's really about taking those existing degrees and building out more degrees programs that are aligned with the needs of uh, the current environment. So an example would be, um, we really believe that our next evolution would be bringing, starting a program for veterinary and technology, or veterinary and techni technicians. Also believe there's an incredible need to create a program in food science. So as we build this school, the school is gonna be aligned with the needs of the agricultural workforce. 
And we already have, again, an expertise in this area. The Agricultural Extension and Research Station has been working, how long, Dr. Smith, for over a decade? Over 20 years. Over 20 years, our Agricultural uh, Extension uh, Research Station, which is located in the IREB, what we now call the Carter Building, that facility, uh, that research has been going on in that building for the last 20 years. Uh, and, and we have some really, really pioneering um, pioneering research that, that's happened in that space. And if you haven't been over there to tour the laboratories and to speak of our researchers, I, I invite you to do so. So we already have that expertise. We already are um, uh, doing extension work in all 55 counties across the state of West Virginia. And in addition to the research, in addition to the extension um, work, uh, we are also... Uh, the recipients of some pretty major uh, grants. So $4.5 million next-gen grant uh, that we received from the USDA. And through the next-gen grant, we were actually going into uh, secondary schools and, and e exposing those students to agriculture, to agricultural um, um, disciplines and getting them excited about uh, studying and en enjoying the agricultural workforce. So we are leaders uh, in the state uh, of West Virginia in this area. So I believe that um, agriculture is an important part of, of our future and uh, it's an important part of our heritage. Thank you. So as we saw earlier um, before this conversation, Highmark um, had a partnership with us with the yes. nursing school. Yeah. Um, and so those are important partnerships to the success of West Virginia State University. So can you share with us some of the key partnerships that have developed during your time as president? Yeah, I mean, thank you for the question. And, and we literally could spend a whole hour on, okay. on partnerships. No, we don't have that. Uh, but we don't have an eye. <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> we do not have an eye. Um, so I, I will just narrow, zero in on a couple of them. Um, of course, first of all, I, I, I always uh, like to acknowledge um, uh, the folks who helped to, to make these partnerships a reality. Of course, Trey Jones has really been knocking it out of the park um, when it comes to going out in the community and, and cultivating relationships with um, our corporate partners. Uh, and uh, thank you, Trey, for your leadership. Uh, you, you know, Trey and I started here at West Virginia State on, on the same day. So I think it was kind of a match uh, made in heaven, I guess. Uh, but thank you, for, thank you for what you do. But the first partnership that I want to highlight is the work that we're doing with uh, Nucor. So Nucor Steel, uh, which, of course, is, is uh, as Brian knows, I see Brian Aloise from Senator Manton's office. But uh, Nucor Steel is located at, uh, up in Mason County. They're going to build a state-of-the-art uh, steel, steel plant, um, multi-billion-dollar investment. But early on, Nucor came to us uh, and they said, we want to work with West Virginia State University to help um, uh, meet our workforce needs. And through a series of conversations, really over a year um, worth of conversations, we have gotten to the point now where uh, members of our faculty and staff are sitting down with Nucor's leadership. And we're actually working to design an operator training program uh, for new core steel right here at West Virginia State University. So keep in mind, new core is going to have to hire a little bit over 800 employees to work in that mill once it's constructed. And many of those 800 employees are going to be operators, folks actually in the mill working that, that high tech facility. And through the OTP program, we are actually going to be helping new core ensure that their operators are not only technically competent, um, in, their, in their craft, but they also have the additional skills, soft skills, leadership skills that they need to be exemplary employees, employees that will be able to help uh, ensure that the mill is running at maximum capacity and really helping to ensure that they have um, leaders, not just employees, but leaders um, uh, really manning the, the plant. So we're excited about the partnership with Nucor. It's something that we, uh, a tailor-made solution, mm -hmm. and that is um, what we, I view as the future of higher education, is that we're going to sit down with uh, folks in the private sector, folks in the public sector, 
and we're going to sit down and create tailor-made solutions that help to, to solve workforce uh, and, and societal challenges. Uh, the other um, partnership that I want to speak to is our certified public manager program, and I'm looking at uh, uh, Dean uh, Williams, and I don't know if Dr. Pennington is, is here, uh, but um, that certified public manager program is um, an incredible, again, tailor-made program that we put together in partnership with uh, the West Virginia um, House of Delegates. So uh, uh, representatives from the speaker's office uh, came to us and they said, hey, West Virginia State is the only public institution of higher education located in close proximity to the state's capital. We want state to play a role in helping to provide uh, professional development, professional growth opportunities for um, our uh, full-time uh, staff, uh, professional staff at the legislature. So again, we sat down in the room uh, with staff from the House of Delegates and with uh, members of our faculty. Uh, we sat down and created a, a tailor-made solution, uh, a solution called the Certified Public Manager Program, a 12-month program which employees, state employees go through, which gives them critical leadership skills that helps them to become better managers. And at the end of that, they receive a nationally recognized certification as certified public managers. They also receive uh, graduate credits, which if they choose, they can apply toward um, our Master's of Public Administration degree. Another example of how we are listening uh, to what the marketplace needs, and we are using our expertise and we have a lot of it here. We're using our expertise to create these solutions, which are helping to, again to answer and to, to answer um, uh, societal and, and workforce workforce challenges. So I could talk about uh, many more of our partnerships, but in the interest of time, I'll leave it at that. So I just wanted to shift to the macro picture of the state of West Virginia. So how do you see West Virginia State University's role for the state? Yeah. Um, so I think West Virginia's state university's role is that of carrying, carrying out in an intentional way, in an aggressive way, our land-grant mission. We are a land-grant institution. And as a land-grant institution, we have a tripartite mission, the mission of, again, teaching excellence, a mission of research, and a mission of extension. And of course, extension means uh, community, community outreach. Um, so I believe that our role is to lean into that land grant mission, to find a way uh, to continue to expand that land grant portfolio. And again, the School of Agriculture is one way that we're doing that. But keep in mind that um, the work that we do through land grant uh, and through extension is not just limited to uh, agriculture. We're also doing work in the area of, of, of health care uh, through our Healthy Grand Families initiative. We're out literally working with grandparents across the state, helping them, providing them with the resources and connecting, connecting them with the resources that they need to raise their grandchildren because West Virginia, at least by the last stats I saw, ranked number two in the nation when it comes to grandparents raising grand, grandparents uh, raising their their grandchildren uh, we're also involved in in work uh, around um, helping to train the next generation of entrepreneurs uh, through our opening soon program which is run through our, our extension uh, we're looking into finding ways to get into the the space of, of, of doing uh, GED um, uh, work to, to provide those students who have dropped out, stopped out of high school an opportunity to get back and to, to continue uh, their degree. And the list goes on and on and on. So I think one of the ways in which we can uh, really impact uh, West Virginia is, is, to, is to lean into the work, into our mission, mm -hmm. and to lean into that in a way that is re responsive uh, to the needs of the current uh, environment. Thank you. So um, 
You know, those are some great achievements that you've shared with us in the partnerships. Um, mm -hmm. uh, any other um, future plans for West Virginia State University that you'd like to share with us today? Well, I, I think, you know, the future plans that uh, we, we talked about uh, relative to the Ag School, that's, that's at the top of my mind uh, right now. Uh, we do have, if, if I think about our, our capital campaign, um, I know that there are things uh, there that we are really, really, really leaning into. One is um, uh, finding the resources to, to build a new track uh, on our campus. Uh, we know that um, our student athletes are an important part of our community, and we want to find a way to support um, specifically the, the, the track and cross country teams uh, by building a, a, a track on our campus. And that is uh, going to take a lot of work, uh, a lot of um, financial commitments that we're going to need to go out and secure. But uh, I believe that uh, that's important to, to, again, to return that heritage to our university and also to help to, again, raise West Virginia State University's profile. So that's something we're working on. We're always working on ways to, um, to tell our story. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I definitely see coming uh, in the future is uh, a new website. Uh, that uh, Jack Bailey and his team have been working on for some time. Eric Jackson's also been engaged with that. But we will uh, really be rolling out a new website because, again, it's important for us to, to be able to, uh, to tell that story, to, to make sure that when folks come to our website that they can get the information that, that they need quickly. Um, but most importantly, I want to go back to what I said uh, earlier about the need for us to really sit down with our board uh, and with uh, our leadership team and ultimately with the community and have a frank but honest conversation about um, how we transform this institution. Not because, um, uh, not just because it's the right thing to do, but because is something that we must do. So what we will be doing uh, in the coming months is we'll be partnering with our board and we'll be having conversations, looking at everything that we do at West Virginia State University and asking ourselves, how can we do it better? How can we do it more efficient, efficiently? Is what we're doing um, in line with where the higher education landscape is, doing, is going? Because my goal is to ensure, one, the long-term sustainability of this institution, but also to ensure that we keep our promises, the promises that we have made in our strategic plan, Future State, a plan which our board approved last year. I'm adamant that Future State is going to be more than just words on a piece of paper. We're going to do the hard work, lean in, again, and to live out the promises, the vision that we've laid out in this future state. And on the other end of that process, I believe that West Virginia State will be a, a more nimble institution. It'll be an institution that reflects where the higher education landscape is going today and tomorrow, and it'll be an institution that is secure uh, for the next 133 years. Any other final thoughts? I just wanted to say, obviously, thank you, thank you. Uh, Governor Flores, for uh, being here today to moderate today's conversation. And as I began this conversation, I want to say thank you to each and every one of you here today. Uh, the state story uh, continues to be one of resilience, and I believe that our best days are yet to come. So thank you for being here. Thank you.